Hello, this is Armchair General, and welcome back to another episode of my legendary campaign of the Oda Clan. So here we have an incredibly easy battle, uh, which we will have to fight because otherwise it'll hurt these walls, which we do not want that because we are very shortly probably going to be defending against this Imagawa army. Luckily, I did bring a lot of bows with me this time, and that could end up being crucial because if they bring bows again, which they are likely to, um, then this will just help me take not quite as many losses. I am a little hurt here. I can't treat these like they are full units, so they probably outnumber me two to one, would be my guess. Zero losses. Should be no surprises there. I just took them out with my bows. Uh, did I get any ranks? No. Alright, so, and these guys are happy enough with the amount of people that I have in this province, so that's pretty good. Um, gosh, I'm really worried about my math here. So this is going to be negative 3 because this is going to go down, negative 2 because I'm going to have that unit, um, negative 1 on the second turn once I get that unit. Did I do this wrong? Oh my god, I took, wait a minute. Oh, there are a couple of units in there. Okay, I thought, I thought I had taken all of them. There's something wrong with, with, with this math here. So negative four next turn, negative three naturally, negative two on the second turn naturally, plus some recruiting two units. Oh, that's how that works out. So this turn, I actually don't mind if I tax it because it's gonna be unhappy with me no matter what anyway. Might as well earn a little bit of additional Koku. And these guys aren't ready to march yet. So we're just gonna stay there and see what the Hattori does, I think. All right, I just have to remember everything that's going on here on this map. And have the ninja acted? Yes, excellent. All right. Uh, I can recruit a little bit, uh, even more than I have. And so I am recruiting in this province already. Let's recruit in Mino as well, just have a little bit of defense there. Um, I do want to worry about not totally blowing away my clan income by recruiting too much, but uh, I think I'm fine for now getting 1872. Let's see if the Imogawa attack. I hope they do. The Hattori did not attack the Kita Batake. Oh man. This leaves me with a really hard decision about what to do with the Kita Batake. Because if I attack them now, I'm going to take the diplomacy hit. Um, unfortunately, and and there's no guarantee that I'm actually going to make it before them. Oh no, the Imagawa go around, they go around, no, no, no. Oh man, I knew that might happen, but, um, but still. Okay, so Mikawa's unhappy, of course. Once I pop that down, then they're going to be fine. So now I'm left with the decision whether to attack them outright. If I attack them, it's not as good as if I make them attack me. They are even trying to ambush me here, but uh, but I think I spotted them. And how much attrition did I take here? So stupid. So incredibly stupid. All right, I guess I better control these myself because I don't want them to be taking attrition. All right, that's good. How many turns until they're at that trade node? My guess is two? Oh, many more than two. Well, just, just one more. <laughs> Three turns, okay. Oh, you know what I could do? I could just go straight for Suruga. I could go straight for Suruga. This makes that a rebel army? Does it make it a rebel army? Oh gosh, I don't know. Here's my thought, if I go for Suruga, then it's basically like clan destroyed, right? But if they have an army left, typically in the same place that you just took, then they become what's basically a rebel army and they act like a rebel army and they're gonna try to retake a province. If this army stays around, then that means that Totomi's screwed, right? Like they're gonna take it from me. But but I don't know how it handles it if the army's not in the territory that you just took. Like does it just get rid of the army? I'm not entirely positive here. If I have to lose one province from Totomi or Mikawa, I would rather lose Totomi, uh, to be honest. Um, so I could let them retake Totomi and then wait for them to come and attack me up at Mikawa, which is the best solution. But there's no guarantee they're not just going to try to circumvent Mikawa, too, and go straight for Owari. Um, 
But at that point, this province might be able to defend itself a little bit better, and or I can I can meet up with some of these troops in the field and then just really kick their butts. Plus these units I just recruited here. I think I'm just gonna have a better time if I don't if I don't stretch myself in this way. So let's retreat. Let's fall back. The best case scenario would be that they don't take the Tomi and this place rebels and neither of us get it, but that's not gonna happen. I doubt that's gonna happen. Uh, I really wish I had an agent over here. Um, that is really unfortunate. Excellent. And extra rank. Critical success and map movement range. What's this? Plus 1% to assassination. Okay, let's do critical success. And... Let's make you an assassination specific guy for now. Later we want sabotage armies, I think. But for now this will be fine. Oh man, I wish I had eyes or that I could reach it in one turn. Let's, let's make sure they're still at war. If they're not, that would make it easy. No, they're still at war. They're also at war with the Hatakayama, though. So they could be fighting. They could very well be fighting the Hatakayama province. Which could explain why they haven't been around. Yeah, all this belongs to the Hatakayama. So I would kind of believe that that's what they're doing right now. Okay, I've got to go for it. I've got to go for it. And this battle is not even going to be an easy one, even when I do siege them out in a siege defense. But um, but this holy site would just be so good for me that I can't ignore it. Uh, so first of all, let's break our trade agreement. And I think if I do that, it doesn't give me a penalty or it gives me less of a penalty. I will listen attentively and then give you a fair response. Now speak let's your see. Part. Let's see if it says anything in this tooltip about... about breaking a treaty. Okay, it doesn't say anything about that. Okay, we've broken it, and has that affected our um, standing with other clans? Let's just take a peek here. Territorial expansion clan is not respected. Good, it doesn't look like it has. Has it affected my honor? It shouldn't have. Still three honor, okay. So I think I did that in the correct order. So now I can declare war on them, safe and sound. I don't need to call... Why would I call them to help if they're already at war with the Kita Bataki? That doesn't make any sense. Best case scenario, they sally out and attack me in the field right now. That would be amazing. Not going to happen, but that would be really great. Okay, 1867 Koku left. Did I move both of these boats already? I think I did. Okay. So now what am I doing? I can recruit quite a lot, um, but my income has dropped. Uh, I can put this, I can make this province taxed again because I'm holding up there with my army. And I'm how many turns away from encampment? Six. So it could be time to upgrade these roads or start working on this trading port for when I get that trade ship. Um, either way, I'm going to end up wanting to make a. Uh, um, make this be my primary hub for my building my warships. So it doesn't hurt me to upgrade this to a trading port and also gives me additional income and growth, particularly. The other option is I upgrade this to a stronghold right now, um, which I don't have plan on abandoning it. And if I do, I can always cancel construction. So I think that's the more urgent of my two needs right now. And let's just do a little more recruitment in Owari. Okay. Hattori did not attack the Kita Batake. Yes, that is great news. Eco haven't expanded at all. So we have, I have no idea what's going on with them. Hatakayama are holding strong. So if the Hattori are fighting them, um, they must be defending pretty well. And yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's see what we have here. They've got five bows. That's not nothing, so this is going to be highly dependent on the battlefield that we get. What I want is a hill and some trees. Hill and some trees, that's what we want. Do we watch? Nah, I don't think we watch. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Duh, yeah. Okay, let's see. This is the other option over here. Not nearly as good, and I'd have to do some kind of uh, forcing their army to reorient. This is like perfect. This is textbook. This is what I'm talking about. Force them to fight an uphill battle in the trees, reduce their bow effectiveness, uh, 
Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. This is going to be um, a great victory. All right. Um, how many spears do they have? I should have counted in that. I was just so eager to get going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I was thinking about leaving a unit in reserve um, just to keep one fresh, but I probably can still get away with it. Um, yeah, in fact, let's do that. I'm gonna have a thinner front line than I might normally otherwise have, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop these units with veterancy on the flanks. That'll protect my Yari Spear Wall, um, and more importantly, well, just as important really, um, it will allow these veteran units to survive the battle. Um, more of them to survive. So this is actually like a classic tactic um, that uh, historical armies used. They used their veteran units as uh, reserve units, um, which did a couple of things. Again, it reserved their veterancy, and it also made it so if they ever needed it, if they ever did need their reserve unit, then they were going to be like a badass thing that could really turn the tide of battle. And they would come in fresh, and you know, they're like really experienced units. Okay, I need to shift this a little bit more this way because I want to make sure that my line is facing the right way. Okay, how's that? That's a bit better. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, and this guy is going to be my right flank unit, and this guy's going to be my left. So this is a tactic I might employ throughout um, my campaign to reserve my... Uh, my veteran units as much as possible. Ideally, I would be able to go a little bit further up this hill just to get this general away because they're gonna, they might be happy sitting and just firing on me with their bows from back here, uh, which isn't good. I might need to run away with my general and come back a little bit. Um, I want to force them into an attack, and because my units are hidden, uh, then they don't know that they're there until they've kind of committed with their own units is the hope. We'll see. Actually, if I put him, start him on the right flank and then I move him off to the left and then pass my army, that might drag their army in front of mine. This is my frontline army. I'm going to put this in group one. And let's put this on play because we're getting real close here. And this, the bows are going to be group two. This way I can just pop into Yari formation as soon as, as, soon as I need to. I have them. I have my bows turned off, fire off, fire at well, uh, for a very important reason. Um, I don't want to give away my position too early. I don't want them to just be comfortable sitting back and taking shots at my bows. So I won't turn on fire at will until um, much of their army has come within range of my bows. That's my strategy here. Force them to fight this uphill battle. If I have to, I can charge down this and get a little bit of an extra charge bonus and still be on an uphill slope, but this is the more extreme slope and it's protected in the woods from their bow fire. So that's the ideal situation here. As they get a little bit closer, I'm, I'm gonna um, make sure that my general's safe and sound. How's he doing over here? How far on this flank is he? He's over here. Okay, let's pull him just as far back against the wall as I can. And let's make him face that way so he's ready to run. They're not there yet. When their bows get about here or so on this line, then they'll be able to be firing on my general. And I want them ideally to be a little bit closer than that with their melee units before I open up fire on my own as well. In fact, I could move my bows just a, a hair forward, and they're all off on this flank. I didn't reorient them, so I should do that right now. Make sure they're at a walk, though. That's very, very important right now. Okay, they're coming within range, and I can't see the limit right now because I'm moving my bows quite as easily as I could, but I'm going to keep an eye on them, and when they stop, then I'm going to start running, or maybe even before that. Maybe I should start running now. Yeah, let's start now. Okay, they're charging. That is really, really good. 
really, really good. I'm loving it. Oh man, I love it. Okay, let's put him back. So he's kind of more centrally located in the army. All right, they have not discovered my units yet. Let's get them firing. And they should just have to charge me now because they're within range, and so they don't really have any other choice. Uh, spear formation now, because um, I'm a little nervous about keeping an eye on everything on this battlefield. Not ideal to do it that early, but it is what it is. I'm going to get these guys ready to go in spear formation on the flanks as well if I have to, because that's going to be the most advantageous. Yep, 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 yep. Go, 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 go. And spear. And yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, these guys. What about you? How are you doing? Let's just do it now. I, I might be able to encircle them with these flank, flank units, um, but we're just going to have to wait and see how this all works out. They could still sneak around my flank here a little bit, which might be what they're trying to do. Uh, I'm not quite sure what they're doing over there. But you can see here, I'm taking like no losses at this time um, because I'm on a slope, I'm protected by these woods, um, and I'm in Yari Spear Formation, and they the same is not true for them. So this was really ideal that they came out and attacked me. And then I can just take their province out from under them and force them to attack me in the castle, which is, um, again, very, very ideal. Alrighty, they're wavering. One is broken, and we're going to get a mass route here any second. It's not going to be all of them, but it's going to be quite a lot of them. Okay, I do not want these units to move, so let's hit that and guard mode. I'm not sure if that works with firing their bows, but I do not want them to get in front of my front line here. Okay, these guys have defeated their opponents, so it's time for them to start encircling. And as soon as these guys break, I'm going to start a charge towards those bows. My lord, their general has fallen! That is great news. Come on, how are these guys still in the game? This is ridiculous. Let's start the charge already with the units that are available. I've taken such minimal losses. This is incredible. Okay, these guys are out. Uh, these guys have um, come back into the game, so I want to keep an eye on them. Actually, let's spear wall up right now. Um, yeah, not ideal to be doing this instead, but... Sorry, I'm not being very descriptive. Oh gosh, okay, okay. So I might have collapsed my front line a little too early because they're coming back now, but um, let's see if I can get in the spear wall on the correct side. This guy's running. And spear wall up. Come on, spear wall, spear wall, spear wall. Who are you engaged with if you can't spear wall? Okay, these guys are just standing there. So let's get you in that charge. Okay, so good to know. Guard mode does not prevent the bows from walking forward once their targets have moved. My lord! A glorious victory will soon be yours! Yep, that was a pretty great victory. I think they're all gone now, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna chase some of these guys down with my general. Heroic victory, hell yeah! Alright, it is really too bad that this heroic victory wasn't with my daimyo. Um, but still, a heroic victory. Yeah, they still have about 800, 700 uh, people left, um, but I'm not really concerned about that. Let's see where he runs. Ah, oh, crap, he ran back into Issei. That is not what we wanted. That's too bad. Didn't even take Tatomi. Really interesting.
Let's see if he takes Mikawa. And what is this? So if I sabotage an army, I get plus two melee defense. Well, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Ochi have converted. Who was destroyed? Shimazu. Interesting. So does that mean that... Um, I forget who it is in that province up there. The day one? I'm not sure. Okay. Getting close. A couple of turns away. Who knows? That could be where the uh, where Satake are going as well. Nope. It's too close to the edge of the sea. Alright. A little strange here. They're giving me time to replenish this unit even more. And um, I mean, I could attack them in the field. In the field at this point, I do think that I um, would win the battle. But again, like any defensive battle that I can fight is, is going to be preferable. Um, I could try for an ambush. But um, yeah, I don't know if that's the best idea here. They've only got one unit that's potentially going to try to take Totomi. Whatever that unit is. I think I can kick its butt. So if that's all they've got to try to take Totomi, then I think I'm going to be able to hold on to it, which is good because that means the rebels are going to come in this province and neither of us will get Totomi. I'd rather take this back from the rebels than um, take it back from the Imogawa. And in fact, I can just walk right around them and just treat it like a buffer province until I've, I've taken care of the Imogawa. Uh, I'm not sure if I should repair these yet or not because they might just burn them down again. But if they do... Well, it's kind of costly. How much was that to repair? Three two three and two eight nine. I was gonna say if they do, they're just buying me more time to recruit more units. Um, but I'm not sure it's worth the cost of having to repair those things again. So I will leave them unrepaired for now. And I'm getting a healthy little uh, defense army up here. So if they, even if they do go around me, I, you know, I'm going to be able to rejoin with some of these units and um, totally crush them. So now we're marching on Ise. And uh, their sad little army here. Attacking them, sieging them, I think will will prevent them from replenishing as well. So now we're just going to siege them out. Yeah, this is this is a pretty sad army, especially if they have to attack us. That's that province is going to be ours in no time. Uh, and my ninja, I don't have any money left over to do anything with my ninja, but um, let's just get him scouting some things out. Maybe I have no idea what the Hattori are up to, but I haven't seen them in a long time, and I still haven't encountered the Takeda. Typically, they might be at South Shinano, Shinano by now and have taken over the Kiso, but that isn't what happened in this case. So, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that. All right. Okay, I think I'm ready to end the turn. Let me just make sure that I'm not forgetting anything here. <laughs> yeah, those that's good that, that, that those things are rebelling. Five turns to an encampment. Okay, sorry you missed some things. You didn't really miss much. All that happened was uh, the rebels did attack that province, um, and I decided to fight the battle here just because I want that army to be as weak as possible when I do eventually fight it. But I'm just going to skip this and show you the, um, the results of the battle. Okay, 162 killed. That's, um, that's not bad for 45 samurai. Oda Nobuhide might have to rethink his strategy of not having any samurai on his team. Did it say food shortage? Uh, oh, did I start? Oh no, because this is, I see. Because this is hurting right there. Um, okay, which great clan? Mori? Interesting. 
I should be able to see if someone's on the node. Ah. The Shoni. I don't want to attack them yet until I know how weak or strong they are. Um, but they're somewhere up here. Shoni, Shoni. Bungo, Buzen. So they just have their two starting provinces. Oh, yeah, they just have their two. So really not sure how strong they are right now. Um, but I might want to keep an eye on them because when they start to collapse, we're going to want to jump in there and grab that trade node from them. That Hail Mary might have been for nothing, but we'll see. Okay, so we've got one more turn left until they have to, they're forced to come out and attack me, and I think that that's just the way we have to go, really. I'm really nervous about this army here. Um, it's not quite within striking range of my provinces, uh, but it could be. This army is still within range to reinforce, and these guys are just sitting here, which really has me worried. Um, now that I have some backup, though, now that I have some backup, it might be worth my while to go out into the field and to attack them. I think I kind of have to in order to free this army up to respond to the Iko Iki threat. And I, the Hattori are nowhere in sight. So, um, yeah, let's be bold and legendary. 